Where's this bus? Justice will pull us of law and protect us of society. It makes sense that it can be seen this way in the media, but that's not always the case. Tonight on Well I, we look into the police on TV. <laughs> Why? Over the past few decades, policing has changed. From the results is everything attitude of Gene Hunt to the more bad book workings of Sergeant Nicholas Angel. Two outstanding policemen. Two outstanding police officers who both managed to achieve the same goal but in different ways. Still, these men were created on the same basis. Stories about the police can be manipulated in many ways. Julia Bravo exploits the audience expectation of genre due to her persistent failures. Right guys, this is a plan. Get the bus, kill Ethan. It's plan A. I've got a plan B, so we'll just have to hope this is going to work. What? So the plan's to kill Ethan, right? Yeah, we're just going to kill him. Really? Why? Stab shot, doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, on the Ethan, we're going to kill Ethan. Yeah, we're going to kill him. <laughs> Julia Bravo is a good example of how audience expectations of genre can be exploited by producers. The show is set in a time when it seems strange for a female police officer to be promoted above a man. And due to the way Jean Darby is treated throughout the episode, we expect the operation at the end to be a success. However, Jean gets it wrong, and the operation is messed up. The audience does not expect this, and so they get a shock. Right, well, on the Darby's placing on the copper meter. Well, we here at Well Eye couldn't decide where to put her. She was desperate for results to prove herself, but also felt the need to go by the book. We spent so long arguing and moving the arrow backwards and forwards that eventually it just, well, fell off. You sit there, we get shot. I know. You okay? <laughs> Good. Who is this man? Never mind that, we've kidnapped your daughter. She just got real. You ready to do this? Damn right I am. You lose. Damn right you lose. Damn it, Marcus, you know better than the swim school. Now is not the time, Mike. Damn right it was. Hey. Okay. What the hell? Why'd you make it so easy for us to find you? Because, Mike, this scene was dragging on a bit. Oh, where's my daughter? Oh, she's safe for now. On oh, now they're here. You should be happy I'm not making Megan watch this. Oh, no, we ain't. Bad boys, bad boys. What, what you gonna, gonna do? do? What you gonna do when we come for you? <laughs> that was our Bad Boys 2 scene that was supposed to come after I talked about how it goes against social context, with racial conflict being highly present in the film. But no, apparently not. It seems this show just got shit. Now, on the copper meter, bad boys. Oh, wait. 
that's broken. Well, that pretty much ruins that section. Um, just, just roll the life on Mars tape. What do you mean we've lost the life on Mars tape? Bloody hell! Well, now what? Life on Mars is a whole new take on the police drama. While still similar to other 1970s police dramas, like The Sweeney, Sam Tyler's Links to the Future turned this into a hybridisation between the police drama and science fiction genres. Also, the ending is an unexpected twist. During the title sequence of each episode, the audience are led to believe there are three possible endings. My name is Sam Tyler. I had an accident and I woke up in 1973. Am I mad? In a coma? Or back in time, whatever's happened, it's like I've landed on a different planet. Now maybe if I can work out the reason, I can get home. However, after finding out one of the endings is true, the audience don't expect Sam to kill himself again in order to get back in 1973. Yeah. Why? Let's do it.